Hey folks, welcome back to Bear Mountain. Today we are working on the next step of LAB. Now you may wonder a little bit about, are we being repetitive because we've done other videos and there will be links, look at the little eye, wherever corner it's in. Um, you can get uh, other information that we've done on LAB videos, plus the one we just released a couple of days ago showing the beginning of making LAB. The reason why we are doing this kind of again is we use a lot of this. This is one of the things, solutions that uh, we go through pretty fast here on the farm because it's got such a broad variety of uses. We talked about how we use it as a soil drench, how we use it with fermented seawater as a mineral supplement for, for plants, um, how you can use it in your compost pile for writing a compost pile that's out of balance, maybe kind of a little stinky. It's also used in Bokashi. We use a lot of it in the Bokashi. So that's where a lot of it goes. Um, how long and how to store it is what we're going to talk about today. Okay, the question is, if you're not using as much LAB and you make up a batch of it, in this case, we used a half gallon of whole milk and what you're seeing here is, this is what we got out of it. We got basically a quart and a half of um, whey LAB uh, solution. So this is nice and fresh and it has a little bit of a sourdough smell to it. It's actually pretty good. Um, we've had warm temperatures, so this process went really fast. Um, the actual cheese curd whey separation happened within about 30 hours. It can go as long as three or four days, maybe even five days in some situations, depending on how strong your solution was that you added, the rice wash solution you added to it, and ambient temperature. So like in the winter time, when we make this stuff, it could go three or four days before it finally separates. So don't panic if you don't see it happen right away in 30 hours. You know, um, this is kind of an unusual situation. So it's always kind of, you gotta be flexible and you kind of gotta watch it. <clears throat> okay, so when we took the cheese off the top, which formed a nice cake layer in, inside of this, it was about a one to two inch layer of cheese curd on the top. We scooped that out and uh, set it aside because it still had a lot of liquid in it. And then we poured the liquid from that into the containers here. We used a strainer. You can get these things at Home Depot. They are, it's a paint strainer. Or a jelly bag. Or a jelly bag, looks kind of the same idea. It's just a fine mesh. It keeps solids from going through. And then we also use, you know, real easy, handy dandy funnel from, you know, you can get these at hardware stores, auto shops, whatever. Uh, and it, it's just a matter of just making it easy to pour through. Then the last step what we did is we put the cheese curds actually in the filter bag and squeezed out any remaining uh, liquid and captured that and put it in here as well. So what we're left with is an actual cheese curd that's actually almost like cottage cheese. And it's actually quite tasty. Ah, don't eat the experiment. No. <laughs> it's kind of a sharp a little bit of a sharp taste to it. But at this point, this is the building blocks for making um, a cheese. So if you're a cheese maker, you're now gonna be at a point where you can use this to uh, make all kinds of different things. You can flavor the cheeses with garlic or whatever. It's actually really quite tasty. What are we doing with it? I'm gonna eat it. <laughs> it's, almost, that? it's almost, well, over time, over a couple of days, um, it's about, interesting enough, it's about a pound of cheese. And um, So what if you took my dried garlic and mixed it in? Wouldn't that be tasty oh, absolutely. with our... Uh, Put some garlic in it, let it sit for a while. See, this would be excellent for making like a, a chunky, uh, cheesy salad dressing or something like that too. Or how about with uh, mixing it with um, our rutabaga noodles? Yeah. Or like in a, yeah, like a faux spaghetti sauce or something like right. that. But yeah, I mean, it's all got 
all kinds of different uses for it. It's actually, it's, it's pretty tasty. So we'll set that aside for right now because what we really want to get to is, okay, this is the material we're using in our Korean natural farming. There is questions that always come up. Well, if I don't get to it right away, how long is this stuff good for? Okay, there's two ways that we store the material. One is refrigerated at, you know, your standard refrigerator temperature, which is probably somewhere of 35 to 7, 37 degrees. Um, we put a paper towel top on it, lock it down with a ring, put a date on it. You can store it in the fridge easily. It'll last six months. The biology, the bacteria will slow way down. They'll basically go into hibernation while they're at that temperature and they won't exhaust their food supply that's left in here. Uh, and they'll be active as soon as you bring them out and start to mix them into, you know, the warmer water of your solution. So you can get um, quite a bit of months of use out of it because most of your KNF solutions, when you're mixing it up, you're talking about four milliliters or like uh, three quarters of a teaspoon per gallon uh, of, of water. So yeah, this could last quite some time. For us, it goes pretty fast because we also use it in Bokashi. In Bokashi, we use 15 mil per liter to get a really concentrated um, inoculation in our Bokashi buckets. The second way of doing it is you want to store it at room temperature. Say you don't have refrigerator space, you want to put this thing into and you want to store it at room temperature. How do you stabilize it? Uh, you stabilize it by super saturating it with brown sugar. And the reason we use brown sugar is because it's, the, it's, it's got um, a higher degree of affinity for water molecules. So the objective is to get as much sugar in this solution such that it begins to kind of filter out down at the bottom. That's when you know you're super saturated. A super saturated sugar solution is like molasses. If you ever think about like molasses and you go, wow, that can store at room temperature. I can open that bottle up three weeks later and it looks the same or a month later or that. Nothing grows on it because anything that requires moisture gets into that, it gets dehydrated or it goes dormant. In this case, what's going to happen is the LAB uh, bacteria in it will actually become dormant and they'll be suspended in this sugar solution until again, when you take the small amount of it, four milliliters and mix it into a gallon of water, then it becomes reactivated and it will do its thing. So we just start by, you know, over a period of time, we're going to take this brown sugar and we're going to just start mixing it in. This is a little bit of a slow process. And the idea is it's just going to get dissolved into the solution. And what's important to do when you're doing this too is, you may notice that this jar was only half full. And the reason why is as you add sugar into it, you're going to start increasing the volume in it. So if you start with a full jar and try to start to super saturate, you're going to run out of room and you won't get there. So then we just kind of stir it until it dissolves in. And we just keep adding sugar over and over and over again through this process. Okay, we've been putting sugar in to the tune of uh, we filled up more than half of it. It's just about full, which is about what you're going to do when you're super saturated. You want to start somewhere between a half, closer to probably a half than two thirds full. Depends on how your container is. And there's two ways you can tell when things are super saturated. The first way is as you keep adding your sugar in, you're going to notice it takes longer and longer for it to sink into the liquid. And kind of one of the tricks that I use is so I know when I'm kind of at that level is when I take my quarter cup of sugar 
and I put it in. Let me do this without making too big of a mess. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi, six Mississippi, seven Mississippi, eight Mississippi, nine Mississippi, 10 Mississippi. It's over 10 seconds before it finally sinks into the solution. That's your key that the stuff is so buoyant now that it takes longer for the weight of the sugar to push itself below the surface. So on that last thing, and it starts to feel pretty thick too. And the last thing, you just kind of stir it. And we should be at a point now where we are super saturated. The last step is after this has a few minutes to settle, to know you, for sure you've reached the super saturation level. What you're going to see is you're going to see a little band of sedimentary sugar down at the bottom. And that is when you know, when you see that band, that's when you know that you've, you're super saturated. So at this point, we just let it sit for probably five to 10 minutes, maybe a little longer, depending. And uh, I can already start to see it starting to form. And it'll be really pronounced in a, in a few minutes. That's when the solution is super saturated and it can store at room temperature. You're still going to want to put a paper towel over the top, lock it down with a, a lock ring, um, store it away from light, uh, particularly in this case, I didn't have a darker uh, glass container, but if you had a brown glass container, that's even better because it'll protect it from light. Okay, so the storage can last up to a year. Um, people have uh, used it quite successfully up to that point. You want to store it again like you would store food. Keep it at you know moderate temperature. It's going to last much longer stored 60 to 70 degrees or you know 55 to 70 degrees in that zone than it's going to last in storing someplace that's very hot or humid or something of that nature. Um, what could go wrong? Okay, you could stop the saturation process before you're actually super saturated. And you'll know that two things will happen. The bacteria will start to feed on the sugar and it's going to start foaming. I mean, really foaming, like, like it's growing because you've left it with water and food. So this bacteria is going to go nuts. What do you do? Um, add more sugar. Take out any excess liquid if you don't have enough room in your jar to add more sugar and then add more sugar until you get to that point again of the material takes a long time to sink and or as you can see right now when we zoom in here you can see just in a few minutes that there is a sediment layer of sugar at the bottom building it's very slight at this point um, what this means is that, that the excess sugar that we've added is dropping down to the bottom at this point as we talked about if you undersaturate it's going to come to life and you're going to get a lot of biologic activity on top. If you don't have any headroom to add more sugar, remove some of it, set it aside. You can use it on uh, your compost pile or whatever, and then add more sugar until you get to that point where you start to see that ring down at the bottom. Then you know you're super saturated. Now, right now, when I look at the top of it, there's a little bit of a, of a, a foam, kind of like a small head on it. And it's not really anything to do with the bacteria. It's to do with the oxygen um, that is being released from dissolving the sugar into, into the liquid. That will go away within you know, a few hours. So I can see already, like I said, it's super saturated. What if you add too much sugar? It's not going to mean anything. Once you hit super saturated, you can't oversaturate. It's just done. Uh, what's going to happen with excess sugar is you're just going to get a bigger pile down at the bottom of your jar. It's, you know, you'll know you're wasting sugar at that point because it's not doing anything. But it's not going to hurt the LAB. The LAB is super saturated. The solution is only going to hold what it can hold. And once it gets past that point, anything else will drop down to the bottom of sedimentation. Um, again, talk about storage. Put a paper towel on top. Use your ring. And uh, it's good to go. 
I would leave it, you know, before you use it right now, after you saturate, leave it for a couple hours to let it s stabilize and set itself up. But uh, basically that's all there is to it. So these are the two methods for LAB. And, and if you look at both of these guys, um, longest lasting, sugar saturated up to a year, shorter life in the fridge, about six months. Um, either case, if you're really using this stuff, you're probably gonna go through it pretty fast anyway. So how soon can you start using it? You can start using this material right away. And the other one? The other one, I'd leave it for a couple hours, you know, maybe a day, just let it, you know, Not stabilize. Weeks. Hmm? Not weeks. No, no, no. It's just it's just a while to, you know, you'll know that it's stabilized when you no longer see any air bubbles at the top. They're, they've gone, they've escaped. And you can definitely see the strong ring at the bottom. Everything is good. Um, I would check this a couple of times, you know, um, after you do the saturation, just to make sure you did it right. You know, don't walk away and leave it and find out you undersaturated it and it goes off crazy and you come back, you know, in a week because you went on vacation and it was on your shelf and you have nothing there but a big sticky mess because it overflowed. <laughs> you don't want to do that. Um, so, you know, just kind of, you got to watch it for a couple hours just as it stabilizes out. Anyway, wanted to share this methodology with you guys and appreciate you watching today. If you have any questions, you know, just put them down at the bottom and, you know, hit the subscribe button. If you don't subscribe, be sure to check out our other videos on the K&F and uh, we hope you all have a good day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.